I apologize in advance if you hear noise. It's because of the refrigerator and the air conditioner. Welcome back to my channel. What's up, y'all? It's Nicole Roche, also known as Plant Based Nicole Roche on Instagram. Make sure you follow me. It's in the description below. I just wanted to come on here real quick. Uh, first, I want to show you guys what I ate the other day that had a good amount of protein. And FYI, I don't do that what is it, one gram of protein per body weight, I feel for myself that that's way too much protein because that would be like 150 grams of protein and I don't want to do that. So for me, a good amount is somewhere between 50 and 60 grams of protein. And I wanted to show you guys how I um, achieved that while eating mostly whole foods and, um, oh, get it together, Nicole. Um, and a lot of, um, raw. Okay. I wanted to go back the last couple of message videos I left. I was talking about lowering my, my natural sugar, fruit sugar intake, because for some reason I thought, I thought that it raises cortisol, which could have been a reason why I was, um, not able to lose the fat around my belly and the fat in my back. Um, but I might have been wrong about that. I was interviewing my guest last week. He's a high raw vegan nutritionist. And I also saw some stuff on Google and stuff that fruit actually does not increase your cortisol. Um, I still need to see some studies on that. But I don't really think that that has anything to do with raising cortisol. Now, added sugar may... Um, but I don't think natural fruit sugar does. So I just wanted to throw that out there. So my guest Remsen was saying that fruits don't raise your cortisol. They actually lower your cortisol. And then a friend of mine on Instagram sent me this from Google saying that fruits can actually lower your cholesterol levels. A balanced diet that includes fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, and healthy fats can help reduce cortisol levels. Um, and you can read the rest of that. But the point is that, um, I already, I, I was only trying to experiment for 30 days and I realized that I don't like that experiment. I didn't like learning my fruit and I'll talk about that why, as, as to why coming up next in the next clip. But, um, I like eating a balanced diet where I'm eating a variety of everything that just works best for me. So I just want to go back to what I was doing before, but um, I'm just being mindful of how much I'm eating and my exercise and all that, but, um, I don't want to lower my fruits. Um, I just want to eat what I want to eat and just do what I do <laughs> and you'll see why. And I also want to just say that, you know, it's all about experimenting and figuring out what's best for you. You try different things, you see, you don't like it, then you don't do that anymore. You, you try something else. So right now it's just a, it's just about me experimenting and figuring out what works best for me and stuff. And, but the bottom line is my diet is still the same fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds, salads, smoothies, potatoes, sweet potatoes, beans, and rice. Um, majority now, every now and then I might have some junk food, whatever, but anyway, okay, let me get on to the next part of the clip. I'm going to talk more about, um, the fruit, how the experiment I did for 30 days, lowering my fruit. Never mind. I decided to read the second half. Um, the phytochemicals in plant foods like fruits and vegetables can help manage cortisol levels. Sugar from whole foods like fruit also seem to decrease cortisol levels while added sugar in processed foods is associated with higher cholesterol level. I mean, cortisol levels. Um, so anyway, um, I might have been wrong in the last two videos when I was talking about fruit increasing cortisol. I think I might've been confused about sugar. Um, and I think that's more specific to processed sugar, processed foods, um, not fruit sugar, not natural sugar. But again, I want to get some studies and research this more to have a definite answer. But anyway, um, yeah, I just wanted to share this with you. Okay, let's continue. Right after I say this, <laughs> I will still be mindful of the sugar from fruit because, um, you know, sugar is sugar. And, um, I had a cavity for the first time a year ago, 
I got a cavity for the first time in like 25 years. And I don't know if it has to do with too much fruit, but if it is, I'm being very mindful after any time I have fruit, I'm just really thoroughly rinsing my mouth because I can't, you can't brush your teeth right after you eat fruit because it's, there's acidity in the fruit and you can mess up your enamel by brushing your teeth right after you eat fruit or acidity, um, foods with acid in it or whatever. So I, I just really make sure you thoroughly rinse your mouth after you eat fruit or anything that has, you know, a lot of acidity in it because you cannot brush your teeth right away because it will mess up your enamel. So um, I do want to throw that out there as well. I did 30 days with decreasing my fruit intake big time. And I honestly, I didn't like the way I felt in my body. I didn't like the way I felt mentally. It just, it didn't feel right. I felt like by decreasing my fruit, it was making my sodium increase because it was making me eat more things that weren't, didn't have uh, sugar in it, which needed seasoning stuff to, to um sodium to make it taste good and it just was making me feel yuck and I felt like I was bloated the whole 30 days like I don't know I was just eating a lot more beans a lot more rice a lot more potatoes and I still eat all those things but I was eating more of it because I was decreasing my fruit and I was eating more sodium because I was decreasing my fruit and it was just making me feel blah and just, I didn't like it. I don't like it. My lifestyle is not made to be trying to decrease the fruit to just a few berries in the morning and some strawberries. It, that ain't me. That ain't, I don't like it. I didn't like it. So F all these things, forget all these rules and stuff like that. Um, my body likes fruit. And I'm probably, I'm just going to do me, okay? I'm going to do me and whatever that means. So I'm not going to be decreasing my fruit like I was for those 30 days anymore. At least not for now because it didn't make me feel good mentally or physically. Um, and it was just making me feel bloated and heavy because of the sodium. Um, so anyway... I, I, you know, and I don't, I don't want to label it. I don't want to be like, oh, I'm high raw again. Oh, I'm, I'm just plant-based. No matter what, I'm still eating the same foods. It's just how much I'm eating of it. You know what I mean? So I'm still eating fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, um, maybe some potatoes and sweet potatoes here and there, you know, beans and rice sometimes, whatever. But the last couple of, uh, last week or so, I've been eating a lot more raw again because I just feel better. So, but I'm not saying I don't eat cooked. I still do eat cooked foods. I just, I, I just like eating more like fruit and salads and stuff. It just makes me feel better. But, um, so I'm not going to focus on it. I'm just going to focus on eating whole foods, fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, salads, beans, potatoes, sweet potatoes, smoothies, whatever. And, and I'm just... That's, that's it. I ain't going to be like, oh, I'm going to only eat this much fruit. I'm going to only eat this much. Not, I ain't got time for all that. Okay. So, um, the other day, I'm going to show you what I ate, but I didn't fill my breakfast. It was the same breakfast I always have. If you've seen a lot of my, what I eat in a day videos under the high raw, raw section. Um, I had the plant-based yogurt, unsweetened plant-based yogurt I get from Trader Joe's, cashew based. And then I put chia seeds and blueberries in it. And then I had two tangerines. That was my breakfast. I didn't film that. I'm going to show you what I had for lunch. Um, for lunch and dinner. I also didn't record my snack. So let me tell you what I had for a snack. And this is, sounds weird. I had some watermelon. Now I let it digest. And then I had some seaweed. I have seaweed, you know, occasionally because it has iodine in it. And that is very important. Uh, plant-based eaters, we don't really get iodine in our food. So um, that's just a way that I get my iodine is seaweed snacks. <laughs> or I got the nori seaweed from um, Whole Foods. It's, it's like this big, long sheet. And then I just fold it in half and eat it. And it's nice and crunchy. But yeah, so I had seaweed and watermelon for a snack. But I'm going to show you what I have for lunch and dinner. And I'm going to show you... Um, the total amount of uh, 
protein I had in that day, even though I didn't record the breakfast and the snack, I still have it in chronometer. Um, yeah. So anyway, I just wanted to give you an update. Uh, forget about lowering the fruit for now. I don't like the way it makes me feel. I don't like the way it like makes me feel. I don't. I, I need that high water. I need, I need it. Doggone it. And plus, I didn't see no difference in my, my belly and my back after 30 days of lowering the, the natural sugar. But anyway... I'm gonna go now. Uh, did I say I just worked out? That's why I'm like wearing like you know workout clothes and had a little scarf on. Didn't feel in my eyebrows, um, but I did put on some lip gloss for you guys so I can kind of at least I put a little eyeliner so I can at least look a little something. I don't know if I told you guys. So the last few videos I wasn't in full blown menopause yet. I think I was saying as of September 1st. So as, as of September 1st, today is the 6th, I think. Today is the 6th, I think. And as of September 1st, your girl is in full-blown menopause. Or all, or they'll call it post-menopause. That means it has officially been 12 full months without my menstrual cycle. So, um, you know, two, and, two years ago, two plus years ago, when I first found out that my hormones were suggesting that I was in menopause, but I wasn't in full-blown menopause yet because I still was having my cycle. My Around that time, that's when I, you know, it was explaining why my period was only coming like every 36 or 37 days. Then it would start, then it started like, like skipping two months in a year. Like then it, the next year was like skipping four months. I didn't have a cycle. Then it was like six months. I didn't have a cycle. Um, so it just kept, it, it was like my period slowly started decreasing two years ago where it was just like little by little until now it's been a full 12 months and it is y'all it's just crazy it's like what but you know what I suffered in my cycle since I was 12 years old until a year ago um well actually I won't even say a year ago I would say two years ago because the last year or so of my cycle it was like easy it was like easy breezy like dude I was like why couldn't it have been like this all my, all my life. Like it, the only reason it was good the last year before this last year, I didn't have it was because I was losing my cycle. So it was like g decreasing, but the cramps were so just easy to deal with. Um, it was only lasting like, three days or so. It was very light. I was like, dang, why couldn't I have experienced this all my life? No, I suffered from the age of 12 until I'll say 47. I suffered every single month in my cycle, even eating plant-based, even eating high raw. Yes, I was one of those who was not blessed enough to have a great cycle once I changed my diet. Nope, didn't happen to me. I suffered every freaking month. I had menstrual pain so bad, I would get weak in my in my body. I would feel nauseous sometimes. Um, it would be going in my legs. I had to bring my heating pad to work. <laughs> you know, I was just suffer. I would suffer. I didn't like to make plans when I knew I was going to have my cycle because I knew I was going to be miserable. It was like being sick every month. I remember when I was in high school, it was even worse when I was in, in, in a teenager in the early 20s. It was a lot worse. Why am I talking about my cycle so much now? Okay. Well, anyway, I remember having to go to the emergency before. I remember crawling on the floor because it was so bad. I remember like, oh my God, I am so thankful. Now, that's one thing I am happy about menopause is that the cycle is over because I suffer. And when I tell you I suffer, I suffer so much. Oh my goodness. I'm sitting here just thinking about... Oh my God. It was horrible. You guys, it was like being sick every month. Wow. Crawling on the floor. Cause I was in so much pain, just crying. Cause I was in so much pain. Um, I think, although I still suffered as an adult, I think it was worse when I was a teenager and in, in my early 20s. Wow. You guys. Okay. Sorry. Y'all got me up here. I mean, I'm up here just reminiscing and just like, wow. Okay. That's one great thing about menopause though. Is I don't have to have a cycle anymore because that mess. Wow. Okay. Anyway, let me show you guys what I ate. Okay. Bye. <laughs> and this is what I ate. Um, I think it was two days ago for lunch and dinner. Remember breakfast was the yogurt snack was seaweed and watermelon. And here it was lunch and dinner. All right. Don't even trip that this was two days ago, but I'm wearing the same top. <laughs> don't trip. 
Anyway, so I came home from the gym and I wanted to make some nice cream and a protein smoothie. So I made the protein, I'm sorry, I started the nice cream and it's back there blending while making my smoothie. My, my nice cream just had um, a mixed, some mixed frozen fruit plus bananas as the base. And I did one tablespoon of almond butter. So for my smoothie, I'm doing almond milk, frozen strawberries, rice protein, um, I think I did two packets of stevia and that was pretty much it. Um, so I'm just washing my strawberries with this little spray I use. I wanted to say that you'll see me making faces when I'm drinking my smoothie because I use, oh, I'm putting my calcium and vitamin D and magnesium is three in one. I put that in the smoothie because I can't swallow it. And this is a rice protein, but I wanted to talk about the rice protein. It's not very tasty. Okay. But I like it because it doesn't have sodium. It only has five milligrams of sodium per serving and it doesn't have added sugar or even natural sugar. It's just brown rice is the only ingredient so that's why i like to use it even though it's not all that great and i can mask the taste a little bit if i add a lot more fruit but i didn't want to like overkill because i just didn't so it's not that's why i'm making those faces it's not really great i only put like what five strawberries in there so that wasn't enough to mask the taste but it wasn't about the taste for me it was about getting the protein in Ugh. <laughs> So I had this protein and then I want to talk about these later fenugreek. Um, ignore this because I'm going to talk about that later. But these are, I take a fenugreek and a um, another supplement. I don't have the bottle anymore. It's called Slippery Elm. Um, I take that um, for menopause and hormone stuff. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, but I took it, I took some of that to that day that I was filming. So I was originally going to talk about it, but I'm going to wait until later in the other clips to talk about those two supplements I take that are natural herbs. Those actually I can take with, you know, just by taking by mouth. The other one, I can't take that one. It's just too big and thick. So I have to put it in a smoothie. So now here's my nice cream, the finished touch. I didn't put any toppings on it because I just didn't feel like it. <laughs> so I just had the nice cream and it was so yummy and sweet and delicious and it was just yummy. And then for dinner, I had a lentil salad with arugula, cucumbers, one half cup of lentils, a red onion and bell pepper. And then I made a tahini dressing and one half cup of lentils is 10 grams of protein. If I did a full cup, that would be 20 grams of protein. But I don't always like to do a full cup because it is 230 uh, milligrams or grams of sodium per serving. So, you know, I have to be careful on the sodium intake as well. So I just did a half a cup and then I made my tahini dressing already. And um, that just has nutritional yeast, which has great protein and B B12 in it. And, um, and then I use my two tablespoons of tahini and water. I think that was it. And I put some seasoning in there that doesn't have any sodium. So that was about it. So for that day, I met all my targets. I actually went beyond folate a little bit too much, but anyway, um, and keep in mind, I didn't show you what I had for breakfast or my snack. Again, breakfast was yogurt and uh, un un unsweetened yogurt with blueberries, chia seeds, and I had two tangerines, and then I had a snack of seaweed and um, watermelon. So those are not on here. I did not record it, but it's included in everything for the chronometer. So I met all my, um, I didn't mention that I took my supplements that day, or yes, I did. I took the three in one, which has calcium, vitamin D, and magnesium in one. I put that in the blender. And then I also took my multivitamin, which is a raw um, vitamin and it's food based. Raw is called vitamin code raw for women. And then I took my iron supplement. And I only take those three things about three times a week. And then I take the stuff for the menopause hormones. I take that every day and the collagen booster um, that I'm going to show you later. Anyway, so as you see, these are all the vitamins I have met and exceeded 
my daily allowance or what I'm supposed to have per day. I have went beyond. And the third one down, B3, I don't know why it's not highlighted, but as you see, I got about 50 something milligrams of that. I don't know why it says no target. Um, I don't know how to fix that, but so I met all my vitamins for the day. Okay. And moving on to the minerals, I have um, met and exceeded most of them. Potassium, I got about 80%, 82% of what I'm supposed to have per on, on a daily basis. Selenium, I was a little short, but it was like 91%. Um, sodium, that's how much sodium I had, 646 milligrams. And then I'm everything else was um, beyond what I need to have in a day. So just wanted to share that with you as well. I also want to show you the protein. I have met all of the, I got about 65 grams in total, and then I met all my amino acids for the day. The only one that was a little short is leucine, leucine. I don't know how you say that. I was it just, I mean, it's still good. It was 95%, but all the other amino acids I have exceeded or met what I'm supposed to have in a day. And again, I don't like to do that protein thing where I'm eating 150 grams of protein, 100 grams of protein per day. That's too much for me. I prefer to stick between 50 and 65. It's a good amount for me. Um, so that's what I ate for lunch and dinner on Tuesday. No, was it Thursday? I don't know. Whatever day that was. Two days ago. Um, and I just wanted to share how um, everything I ate in a day allowed me to have about 65 grams of protein and meet all the vitamins and minerals, including my supplements. Now, I want to talk about this next clip. This is a something I take every day. This is a collagen booster, Mary Ruth's. Um, it's like a natural thing. I don't like the taste anymore. At first, I used to like it because it's chocolate, but I think because it's dark chocolate, it just, I, I don't like it anymore. So don't chip off my face. I just take one teaspoon of that a day. Collagen boosting, um, as you know, we can't just take collagen. So we have collagen boosting um, supplements. And these are the things I was mentioning earlier, fenugreek and slippery elm. I take these every day. Fenugreek may increase estradiol levels, which can increase sexual arousal and help relieve menopausal symptoms. I don't really have too many menopausal symptoms, um, but I still take it to prevent but I have been ha having a hard time losing the fat, belly fat and the back fat. And I think that's because of the hormones, but I'm going to get that under control. Anyway, continuing, for example, one study found that participants taking fenugreek supplements experienced a 120% increase in estradiol levels over 90 days and a reduction in severity of menopause related symptoms. Also fenugreek may have a hormonal balancing effect due to its, I'm not even going to try to say that word, just know that it might help balance hormones as well. It also is reported that fenugreek extracts positively reduced body, body fat, increased lean body mass, improved muscle strength and endurance, and accelerated the rate of glycogen resynthesis during post-exercise recovery. Now, I don't know about the balancing fat stuff yet, because I still got fat in my back, but <laughs> it's all a work in progress. It's also known to increase testosterone. So um, check it out, you guys. Do some research on fenugreek. And I'm going to talk about slippery elm now. Slippery elm is sometimes used to support vaginal health and may help with vaginal dryness caused by menopause. But it's not usually considered useful for managing menopausal symptoms. So the other one is helping menopausal symptoms, the fenugreek, but this one is more about vaginal health and helping with dryness. Um, slippery elm capsules are sometimes used to treat vaginal dryness caused by menopause, birth control, hormonal imbalances, and more. Although I don't have a menstrual cycle anymore, I just wanted to share that it's also used to treat premenstrual syndrome, PMS, especially for women going through perimenopause. So for those of you who are in perimenopause, but still have your menstrual cycle, it can also help that. Um, slippery elm can also help with constipation by softening and bulking up stool and can help with diarrhea by forming stool. I don't have that problem, but it is good for that as well. Keeping it 100, I got the slippery elm only for the, to assist with vaginal dryness because 
as you know, when you start going through perimenopause and your estrogen is decreasing, it can affect your natural lubrication. So um, it can assist with that. So I got that one for that and the fenugreek just to help like prevent menopause symptoms and things like that. Um, I'm not really getting too many things. I do have a few things. I also recognize that my memory, <laughs> my short-term memory is affected. I think that's because of the menopause. Like I can literally think that I'm going to do something and forget that I thought that thought two minutes later. <laughs> it's weird. But anyway, so yeah, I just wanted to share these supplements, check them out, research them for yourself and um, see if it can help you if you are going through the change like me. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Please share this video and please subscribe if you're interested in content about the healthy lifestyle. And now I'll probably be talking about menopause and stuff sometimes as well. Um, natural healthy eating. And I also have a podcast that tell people stories about how they've lost weight and healed their bodies. So check it out. You guys, thank you so much. And I'll see you guys in the next video.